Hi everybody. In this video I'm going to talk about using correlations to understand your data. So a great way to explore a new data set is to use a, um, a pairwise correlation matrix. Now this is just like calling the correlation function, the core function, except it's going to um, build a matrix of the correlation of every combination of your variables. So if you have 10 variables it's going to return a matrix 10 by 10 with the correlation uh, measurements of every one of your of your variables so it doesn't really matter if you have an outcome or you're looking for an outcome or this is not even about you know looking for outcomes it's going to measure everything against everything and you're going to get a good idea of what is correlated to what so for those not familiar with the correlation matrix especially the correlation coefficient is simply a measure of similarity between two vectors of numbers so if it's very similar you'll get a one and return a one. If it's uh, negatively but perf but 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 perfectly uh, correlated, it's going to return a negative one. So it ranges between one and negative one, and zero is not correlated at all. So let's look at a quick uh, example here. Very easy to set up. So uh, a vector of one to five versus a vector of one to five is perfectly correlated. A vector of uh, one to five versus five to one is going to be perfectly negatively correlated. And if we just look at something more random, now our correlation starts going down. And we can, you know, if we change this to a 1, it drops even more, right? So we're going to look, today we're going to look at a lot more complicated example, uh, a more complex data set. And we're going to download it from uh, the University of California, the UCI Machine Learning Repository, and uh, it's the it's based on the 1994 census. And here is the URL. Remember, all this code, all the links are on GitHub and in a walkthrough, so you don't need to to um, copy them. Just get the whole thing from there. So here, this is the URL. And we're going to use we're using the R curl function get URL, which is going to just pass the URL uh, link and turn the SSL verify peer to false because it's HTTPS. And if this does not work, I'm also uh, I also have an alternative way um, in on GitHub in the source code to uh, to get to this data. So now that we have we've downloaded the temp file, you just read it as a normal CSV. And it's going to return. Let's see what it returns. Um, there. So this is uh, the 1994 census data, and we're looking at predicting those that make less uh, than fifty thousand dollars a year, or more than fifty thousand dollars a year. So we notice that we don't have the headers, so that's easy. We're going to bring that in. Actually, we're not really bringing them in. We're just uh, changing the names, and this gives us. So now you see that. So in order to predict this income, whether they're above or below this, this income threshold, you have native country, hours worked, uh, sex, race, occupation, marital status, etc. And as you notice, this is not really a, uh, a binary format, so we're going to change that. We're going to fix that. And we're going to say if they make less than 50k, it's a zero. And if it's more than 50k, it's a 1. And I've changed that order because it's going to make reading the pairwise correlation plot a lot easier. Okay. So, and if you look at the data that we have so far, we have a lot of factors. And that's not going to work because the correlation function requires new numbers. So we're going to have to change all the factors to numbers. So we're going to call the caret library. And I have a video on the dummy var function if you're curious about it. And we're basically saying, um, dummify everything using the, the, the formula of the adults data set. So basically, the dummy var is not going to touch integers or numbers. It's just going to transform either characters or factors. We have no characters, but we have all these factors. And all these factors will be broken out into their individual columns. So, error. And just a quick check, if you look at the dimension of our original data set, it had 15 uh, columns. And the new one, the transform one, has 109. So let's just a quick peek at what it returns. And you see it's broken down all the countries uh, for the, the native country variable, for example. 
into individual countries and So native countries was broken out, sex, capital gain, race, etc. Everything was broken out, and everything is a number. So now we can we can actually uh, uh, feed this entire data set to to the uh, a correlation uh, function. So, and that's what we're going to do. Though we're going to um, get some help from two functions from Stephen Turner, and there is a link also to his site. Uh, to his GitHub, where you can, you know, get more details about it. But one of the functions is called core prob, and the other is called flattened square matrix. So what does core prob do? Core prob um, will uh, uh, create a correlation matrix uh, and also return the p-value. So not only it's going to create a big square of your each combination of your variables and return the correlation and the p-value of that relationship of each variable. Flatten matrix is simply going to take this huge square and uh, uh, break it down into four columns, like a column of, of rows, uh, a column of columns, and basically column row names, column names, and the correlation and the p-value. So let's just pass that in. We're going to do everything in one shot. So we're basically calling the core.prob we're passing our transform data set to core.prob, and then we're passing that result to the flattened square matrix. And let's see what it returns. So a very large file, a, a, a lot of rows, almost 6,000 rows, but only four columns. So if we look at the, the what, it, what it is, it's basically, you know, these are the row names, these are the column names, the correlation, and the p-value. So what well, this is allowed, by flattening like this, the advantage is that then we can sort it by either p-value or, cor or correlation value. We're going to do it. We're not going to use the p-values, but the correlation values. And that's what that's what we're going to do. So one thing we could do is it's a simple sorting. So we're going to say order it by the absolute correlation value, right? So we're going to see um, the most correlated values first. So for example, uh, sex female, sex male are from the same factor, two levels, there's only two levels in this this factor variable. Obviously, it's a perfectly negatively correlated. This is not going to help us at all, unfortunately, for what we need. So we need to do a little bit more um, uh, work in order to get the data the way we want it in a, in a form that's useful for uh, understanding what are the correlated var variables to our outcome variable. So here, we instead this time we're going to say, give us everything, the absolute correlation that is bigger than 0.2, so basically co negatively or po positively correlated values, that relates to the income variable. And this actually returns a lot less, so I can just call it this way. And there you go, I think it's 11 um, correlations. And you see that the strongest correlation is a positive correlation between whether a person is married and their income. So being married is positively correlated to income. This is a very very related to the first one, so they kind of overlap. We don't need both. Education is positively correlated to income, meaning the more you more education you have, the more money you will make. Um, and age is another interesting one, is positively correlated. So the older you are, the more money you make. Okay. So this is so these are the variables that we're interested in plotting in a correlation matrix to understand this the, uh, this data further. And this is the last thing we're going to do. So I'm actually going to pull the first one, the fourth, uh, you know, I should probably do the third one. Basically, we're, we're, we're picking and choosing some of the variables. So let's go with the first one. The number, the, the education. See, married, husband, spouse, they're all related. So I'm going to skip. So let's go. Then we're going to go to age and hours work. Okay, and a few more here. And like, we don't need both. We'll just pick one. And let's see what that gives us. There. So here are a few variables to look at. So I'm going to plot these in a pairwise spell it. A 
pairwise plot and we're going to use a psych uh, uh, package because it has a great panel pair, uh, uh, panel wise uh, pairwise panel that is very clear so we're going to say give uh, uh, plot the combinations of all the, the of all the best um, variables and income as well because income as you know is just not in here is not in our best set so we're going to add it to it and there it is we're going to see a um, a panel should pop up shortly and there it is so here you see that um, being married is highly correlated to income. Education is highly correlated, positively correlated to income as well. Age, not as strong, but still positively correlated. So the older you are, uh, the, the the higher the income. These are only correlations again, not causations. But um, and by having it in a correlation plot, then you can start looking at other things. You can start um, seeing, for example, uh, married and age. Uh, older, the, 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 the more age, the, the higher, you know, the, the more correlated to being married, right? Um, so these are the kind of things they're going to, th th these are going to trigger more questions uh, as you, uh, you know, explore your data. And that's the power of these uh, pairwise correlation plots. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, there is the, uh, the walkthrough will be uh, and a link in, um, in the description of the video. And uh, I have uh, um, a lot more walkthroughs. So go through the walkthrough uh, link and uh, hit the home button and you'll see a whole, a, a whole set of other articles and videos. Thanks for watching.